Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about recent developments involving Golden Boy. Apparently, uh, there was a bit of a disagreement between Oscar De La Hoya and Richard Schaefer over the direction of Golden Boy. Oscar De La Hoya wanted Golden Boy to work more closely with Top Rank and Bob Arrow, according to reports. Right? There's been a cold war in boxing. Golden Boy and Top Rank haven't gotten along. We haven't seen Manny Pacquiao fighting Golden Boy fighters, right? We haven't seen Golden Boy reach out to top rank to have their fighters fight Manny Pacquiao and other top rank fighters, right? So Oscar, who really is the principal of Golden Boy, he wanted Golden Boy to move in the direction of greater cooperation with the other big promoter in the United States top rank. Richard Schaefer by contrast didn't want to work with Bob Arrow because quite frankly there were issues over contractual rights, profit shares. Right? In boxing people want options on your future fights. Right? Richard Schaefer believed that Golden Boy had a great stable of fighters. He didn't want to give away options on future fights or anything like that. Uh, Richard Schaefer believed that Golden Boy was fully capable of promoting the biggest fights out there. Let me point out that Golden Boy did just that in promoting the Floyd Mayweather Canelo fight, right? The highest grossing fight in nominal dollars in boxing history. And Richard Schaefer didn't understand why Golden Boy would have to compromise in any way, shape, or form in doing business deals that could be win-win with top rank, right? Well, apparently now Richard Schaefer is out. He has issued his resignation. He is moving on. It looks like the future is going to be toward greater cooperation between Golden Boy and top rank. Now understand, my point of view is just a minority point of view. There are many others, but I have strong feelings about this. I'm just going to tell you one man's opinion. I think it's bad for boxing. Just to be blunt, right? And the reason it's bad for boxing is, to me, this is no different than if sports leagues get together to bid down the price of athletes, right? This to me is kind of like the NCAA, schools getting together to set rules that don't benefit the athletes, right? We'll talk about the NCAA another day. You know where I stand on that system. Let's talk about this one. Understand right now, boxing already has a procedure where if the promoters don't agree, the fighters still get handsomely paid through a bidding process that we call a purse bid. Understand, they hold purse bids not just for championship fights, but also for elimination fights. Right? And so, if Golden Boy and Top Rank didn't agree on a matchup between two fighters in a title fight, there should be a third party there the sanctioning body, which should be independent of the promoters. Now we know that's not really the situation, right? We know that couldn't be the situation when a fighter like Mike Alvarado, who was a 140 pound fighter, mysteriously after a loss, ends up in an elimination match for the right to fight for the title at 147 pounds. Right? But, 
theoretically, these sanctioning bodies are supposed to be independent of the promoters. And so theoretically, if, let's say, two fighters are to fight for the championship and their promoters can't agree, theoretically then, they're supposed to be a purse bid that's supposed to allow any promoter, not just these two, but any promoter to step in and offer top dollar for the right to do the fight, right? I like that system. Why? Because it gets top dollar for the boxers, right? The boxers get a proportion of the purse bid depending on their status, whether one's the champ, whether one's the challenger, etc. Right? That's what you want. What you don't want are the promoters getting together and reaching some kind of agreement, right? Where they agree on what you should get instead of what the market would allow you to make, right? In other words, you know, in the 1960s here in the United States, you had the National Football League. Then you had an upstart league, the American Football League, the AFL. And, of course, the players started making money they had never made before in football because these two leagues started bidding against each other. That's what you want. You want the athletes to get top dollars. I don't want Oscar De La Hoya holding hands with Bob Arum, right, having a nod and a wink type of agreement so that when managers who represent their fighters, right, understand the manager is not the promoter, when the manager is dealing with the promoters, the manager doesn't have leverage because the promoter is lowballing. And the manager knows that even when the current promotional contract expires, he can't cross the street and get more money. Right? It's only in boxing that we seem to think that promoters getting together to be friendly with each other is a good thing. It's not. Right? This is no different than employers getting together to set wages among themselves and then telling the workers this is what your employer and your employer's competitor agreed you should be paid you should be paid what the market will be not what chummy promoters agree upon so I agree with Richard Schaefer I think the athletes the boxers in this case right get paid much more if the promoters are combative if the com if the promoters are actually truly competing with each other I don't believe any special fights are gonna be made that wouldn't have been made otherwise if Oscar De La Hoya gets chummy with Bob Arum right you don't want those guys being business partners you want those guys being competitors. If they get together on a deal, you want to make sure it's win-win. More money for everyone, not just more money for them. Let me also point out, too, that this is part of my long-standing lament, as I've said in other videos, about the fact that really there's no money in boxing. Given the risk, right, brain injury, slurred speech, uh, if you've watched the Martinez Cotto 24-7, you're going to hear about Cotto's knee injury. Excuse me, not Cotto's knee injury, Martinez's knee injury. Martinez's shoulder injury, right? This is a sport where the athletes get hurt. Aren't you a bit amazed that many of the great warriors of yesterday 
when they fade into the limelight, they drop off the map to the point where Matthew Saad Muhammad can die and then we find out he was homeless. Right? That's how brutal the sport is. How many of these great fighters have had tax problems? Roberto Duran, Julio Cesar Chavez, Thomas Hearns. Right? It's an all-star list. Boxing doesn't cradle its old-timers the way other sports do. Right? Because there's no boxing league, there's no big time professional union. So understand, the lifespan of a boxer is relatively short. I know at the top end you have a lot of guys in their late 30s, early 40s making a lot of money. But for most, right, the sport quite frankly doesn't pay well enough for the fighter to quit their day job. Right? Understand, that's the history of the sport. You've had contenders keeping grueling day jobs. Benny Briscoe, as I said in an earlier video, was a sanitation worker who then, when he got the opportunity to fight, went in that direction. One of the eye-openers, and it's unintended, I'm sure, of this trend in boxing toward these before the bell all access 24 7 shows is you get to take a step back and you get to find out that for example up until recently Victor Ortiz's trainer Danny Garcia the brother of Robert Garcia right had a day job even the trainers have day jobs Right? Don't get fooled when you see the Mayweather gym and the wild card gym for Freddie Roach. Mayweather and Freddie Roach are the top end of the sport. Right? Mayweather is boxing's biggest cash cow. Freddie Roach is a five or six time uh, Boxing Writers of America uh, trainer of the year. Right? Many of these trainers can't even afford their own gym. If they have an ownership uh, interest in a gym, it's with other investors, right? Just because a guy's name's on the gym doesn't mean he owns 100% of it. Understand, too, in boxing, there are no health benefits, right? $100,000 in boxing isn't the same as $100,000 in the world. If you have a $100,000 a year job or a $50,000 a year job, right? You probably have health benefits, right? You probably don't have the expenses that boxers have, right? Nor, let's be real here, nor do you have the health bills right you hear about these boxers who after a fight get stitches right eight stitches you think that's the end of the injury right even great fighters Sugar Ray Leonard detached retina current fighters Abner Maris you realize Maris has had a detached retina he's back from the detached retina don't think for a second that all of these eye injuries are fixable. Lehman Brewster, who beat Vladimir Klitschko, can barely see out of one eye. Calvin Brock, who lost to Vladimir Klitschko, is now blind in one eye. Think about it. Right? Also understand, because boxing is event-based, because it's the kind of thing where you get $100,000 this fight, and I'm talking about the non-elite fighters, right? Um, understand, to get to $100,000 for a purse, you have to be a contender. Let's stop kidding ourselves, or an Olympic gold medalist, right? Let's say you're lucky enough to get $100,000, and that already places you in rear ear in boxing. Understand it's still hard to get a mortgage from a bank because banks want to see 
a continuing source of revenue. They know boxing's event-based. They know if you lose the $100,000 fight, you might be back down getting $5,000 for a fight. Right? And so to me, when I hear that the big-time promoters are now getting chummy and they're going to work together more, I'm about as enthusiastic about that as I am hearing that the NCAA is having a meeting on working more closely together. Right? To me, it adds up to one thing. Promoters lowballing fighters. Right? I'd rather know that there are some promoters out there who are aggressively bidding on fights, who are aggressively bidding on fighters, who are trying to get top dollar right I want managers to know that a Richard Schaefer is out there preparing a purse bid so that Golden Boy can promote a fight that it can't agree on the price of with top rank that's what I want that's how you get top dollar Right? So, I'm a skeptic of this deal. Right? I'm sure we'll get some photo op and everyone's going to smile and they're going to say, yes, we're going to work together and we'll hear of some fight between a golden boy fighter and a top rank fighter. Kumbaya, all is well in the world. Look at the purses. Look at what happens going forward. Right? I like the idea of rival sports leagues. I like the idea of rival promoters. Right? I like the idea of promoters bidding on everything. I don't like the idea of promoters getting too chummy. That never works. Right? If you're a fighter, you don't want your manager too chummy with the promoter. Right? If you have a promoter and you're a fighter, you don't want that promoter too chummy with its opposition. Right? And so, let's see how this whole thing shakes out. Let me make a, some other points too. Richard Schaefer is excellent at what he does. Look at the track record of Golden Boy the last, let's say, 18 months. It's been stellar. Right, Richard Schaefer has been really at the nexus of some of the biggest fights in recent memory. Look at the talent Golden Boy's put together. Right, I'm sure you've watched more than one Golden Boy fight where you thought, hey, this is a talented fighter, Adrian Broner, whoever. Right, Golden Boy's stable of fighters is a great stable of fighters. Richard Schaefer has put together quite a business. This is while Oscar has had his problems and has. You remember Oscar had to leave the Canelo Mayweather promotion because he had a relapse. Right? Now you know something's wrong when the owner, the majority owner, comes back in the fold, the business is thriving, and like Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson in the early 1990s with the Dallas Cowboys, these two guys can't work out their differences. Think about it. You get out of rehab, you get back to your business, and while you were gone, your friend who you left in charge of the business has built Microsoft or Google. Right? There's more money for everyone. How could there possibly be a beef. In fact, how could the beef be over the degree of cooperation with your competitor? Right? That's just ridiculous. Unfortunately, that's the reality in boxing. Right? I have no problem with Top Rank having a Cold War with Golden Boy. Right? If it means bigger purses, bigger bids, more money for fighters, then count me in. Because really, 
That's what we should want in a sport that treats its old great fighters like Matthew Saad Muhammad so poorly. Right? So, you know, take Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., for example. Just food for thought. Right now, he has a difference of opinion with Top Rank. He's a very popular fighter. He has big time market value. To me, in an ideal world, other promoters would be aggressively bidding for it. Right? They say, hey, Julio, when your contract runs out, why don't you think about signing with us? Here's what we're offering. Right? You would hope that promoters are sitting around saying, wow, this guy's fights are grossing big time money. That means we can offer him big time money. What will it take for us to beat what top rank can offer? Right? Isn't that what you want? Doesn't that, in fact, help compensate Chavez Jr. for the risk he's taking in fighting? What you don't want is a nod and a wink. Promoters are all cooperating together. Right? Top rank hears that Chavez Jr. is about to sign with Golden Boy and thinks, hey, you know what? We're down with Oscar. Even if Chavez Jr. signs with Golden Boy, he'll still be on top rank cards because Oscar and us, we're like this. Right? So when we hear that Golden Boy is beating our bid, hey, there's no, there's no urgency. They're a competitor, but they're not really a competitor. They're our boys. They just work under a different corporate name. Count me out of that. Right? Let's have a free market. Let's have competition. The fighters need to be nervous about any increased competition between competing promoters. Right? The managers need to be diligent. I think this could be a bad deal for fighters. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.